I'm just a guy who loves Disney and has way too much time on his hands. If anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I'm here to rate, review, and describe all of your favorite things from the magical world of Disney. I'm File91E and welcome to my Disney News and Reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Disney News and Reviews. I'm File91E and a pretty cool week for me this week guys. Uh, we survived the snowmageddon, so we didn't really get any snow here in Baltimore. We, it all went up north, and uh, hopefully everybody up in Boston and uh, New York, uh, you know, and all in that region are doing pretty good. Um, uh, I'm I got, I'm kind of upgrading my video stuff. Not my camera here, but I'm working on some new light things, and uh, I have a dimmer switch now for my lights. Ooh, you know that sort of thing. Um, so I'm just kind of doing that. I also just got this uh, thing called the Aver Media Portable thing, which allows me to uh, record, uh, you know, gameplay and stuff like that. But that w hopefully will allow me to record um, uh, off of my camera into, you know, using basically my big camera as a, uh, a webcam. That's kind of what I'm hoping for. Uh, we'll see if that works or not. Um, but it, at least I'll be able to, you know, get back to doing, uh, you know, like, uh, game plays and stuff like that, uh, you know, with Disney Infinity and whatnot. So, uh, anyway, I just, I, I just figured I'd tell you that I'm working on that. I have a couple other things I need to get, but, you know, for the most part, it's just, you know, simple stuff that I'm either building or buying. So, yeah. Um, the were in the land answer from last week was Toy Story Midway Mania. I think a lot of you guys knew that. One of the posters from the thing, so there you go. Um, also, I'm, I want to remind you again of the giveaway, the 101 Dalmatians giveaway that I'm doing. Um, you know, links below to that because we got about two weeks left, and then I'll do my, I'll, I'll, I'll reveal it in the in, in the live Q and A, which hopefully should be broadcast via this, com you know, this uh, camera from you know with the Aver Media thing. So who knows? Well, you know, we'll just see how it goes with that. Also, Merchandise March, I've started to get some bits of merchandise, you know, from Toys R Us and all that stuff. I got a Disney Princess thing that I think would be cool. Uh, so, if you like the Disney Princess stuff, I want to get a Star Wars thing and a Lego thing. Um, I'm not sure if I want to get a Play-Doh thing or not. Not totally sure about that. Uh, I'll just have to see what's out there when I get it. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much what's been going on with me this week nothing too much you know you know nothing too crazy you know, we're getting toward Valentine's Day so if you have a Valentine make sure you treat them right okay so yeah there you go so anyway that's what's going on with me this week let's get right to the news So the first wave of Disney Springs is almost officially opened uh, the first few stores and restaurants have begun opening their doors Apex by Sunglass Hut and Chapel Hats uh, are now open with all of their signs up. It looks pretty cool. I love the brickwork there. Uh, also, the new Starbucks Trolley Car Cafe had a uh, soft opening for a few invited guests, and that looks pretty cool. So when that finally opens up, that'll look great. Uh, and finally, the garage at the landing at Disney Springs has uh, installed and has currently been testing and adjusting a new parking space awareness system that using sensors and lights and whatnot uh, can tell you if a space is available or not. Now I work at a pretty big hospital here in Baltimore and we kind of have that in one of our garages. Basically it's an LED light overhead where if it's uh, on, uh, uh, you, you know, a space is open. If it's off, a space is um, uh, taken. So. Uh, with Disney, if it's red, it's taken. If it's green, you know, you, you, you know you're good to go. Um, now, the, what's cool is they they even have a uh, space counter as you enter the garage uh, to let you know which level has more spaces and which level, you know, it's like 100 spaces on level four, or 200 on level five, that sort of thing. Now, as we get closer to spring, expect a lot more sh you know, shops in the landing section of Disney Springs to open up. So that's pretty cool. Really awesome stuff. Peter Pan's flight at the Magic Kingdom has now been upgraded with an interactive queue. 
Uh, the new queue effectively takes you through the Darling House uh, to the kids' bedroom where you depart to Neverland. Uh, on the walls there are pictures and, and windows and such, you know, just kind of like normal house stuff. Uh, there's also silhouettes of the parents there, that's really neat. Um, now, when you finally get to the kids' room area, there are actually projection effects that show Tinkerbell flying around and doing stuff. And uh, there's a silhouette. You actually get your silhouette you know, on the wall, and you can interact with Peter Pan's shadow, and that's actually really neat. Uh, it's really uh, cool, and it's uh, uh, it should provide some reprieve for the long wait, you know, because Peter Pan's flight does take a uh, you know, the wait for that is always insane. It's one of the more popular attractions in the Magic Kingdom, so they made the wait a little bit easier. So awesome stuff there, Peter Pan's flight. Disney has announced the performer lineup for the 2015 Night of Joy concerts uh, taking place this year on September 11th and September 12th. Uh, tickets for the Magic Kingdom event will be available later in the spring. Uh, some of the performers that will be there include Toby Mac, Skillet, uh, Seventh Time Down, and as usual, be I'm only mentioning the Night of Joy because uh, I work with the sister of the guitarist for mercy me and uh, just because she's one of my good friends I have to mention it uh, so her brother Barry and his bandmates will get a little pot you know plug from Fallen not any so uh, you know cool stuff there you know go check out uh, you know mercy me and the night of joy if you're into Christian rock and Christian music uh, it is a very cool event and very well attended so awesome stuff there and finally, breakfast at the Whispering Canyon Cafe will be relocated to the Artist Point next week as work takes place on the Wilderness Lodge lobby. Uh, the move will affect breakfast only uh, on February 5th and February 12th. Um, lunch and dinner will continue to be served in the Whispering Canyon as normal. The usual uh, server-provided fun and games will be on hand. And the full menu will be available in Artist Point with the exception of pancakes. Uh, which apparently need special kitchen equipment not available at the Artist Point. A skillet isn't available there. Pancakes. Get a hot plate. You can get them done. I can do. I'm making pancakes right now. No, I'm not. I'm not actually. But I did have some pancakes for dinner because I had breakfast for dinner. And that's the greatest thing in the world. Breakfast for dinner. So yeah, moving on. Uh, anyway, that's the news for this week. Let's get right to the reviews. All right, guys, in order to break the monotony of doing reviews every week, I think, you know, I know you guys like them, um, but I want to break it up by doing some more top tens. I fell out of doing top tens when I got back from Disneyland, but I want to get back to doing it. Um, so every month now, should, you know, there should be a top ten at the end. And, um, you know, we'll just see how that goes, if you're into them or, you know, if you like them or not, you know, just let me know. Um, but this uh, week's top 10, um, or this month's top 10, I totally forgot about, and it was one of the ones that I was excited about doing, and then Disneyland got, you know, you know, caught me up and everything. But anyway, so this week's, or this month's top 10, is the top uh, ride vehicles, attraction vehicles in Disneyland. Now, I could do a a mixture of the top ride vehicles in all of Disney uh, but there are, are a lot of ride vehicles in Walt Disney World and I think that they could get their own they you know could warrant their own um uh, what is it called there you know you know warrant their own show so uh, I'll do that you know in a couple months or whatever you know if I do a retro thing or whatever um, but you know I just got back from Disneyland and they're fresh in my mind so I want to talk to you about my favorite Disneyland ride vehicles. Now it is a top 10, not a top 15 or anything, so I have some honorable mentions here. Oh, okay, that was my phone. Sorry about that. Uh, there are a couple honorable mentions here, and some of them you might actually be like, oh my god, that's crazy. How is that not in your top 10? Well, this top 10 is, may is not based on any, you know, technical deficiencies or anything like that. Um, it's based on my personal opinion and which ones just struck me, uh, you know, uh, you know, as an awesome vehicle. Like some of them are more technically, uh, or, you know, advanced than any of the other ones on my top 10, but, um, I just had to mention them because they, you know, they were honorable, you know, to mention, but, uh, my top 10 are just personal ones that I loved and, uh, 
you know, I'd love to hear yours. So post them, you know, post your favorite deal, Walt, uh, Disneyland ride vehicles in the comment section below. Or even your Walt Disney World ones too. I would like to hear those too. So here's some honorable mentions. First one is the Twilight Zone. Uh, now, the Walt Disney World Twilight Zone uh, elevator is more of a ride vehicle than the one in Disneyland because the one in Disneyland only goes up and down. In Walt Disney World, it actually goes forward. So that's pretty cool, but I figured I'd mention that. Uh, Star Tours, it's a really good you know, vehicle, but you don't actually see the whole vehicle itself and it's, you know, it's, it's, you're not really moving anywhere. Uh, it's cool, but it, you know, it just kind of really didn't do it for me. Uh, the Mad Tea Party Cups, that almost made it in. Uh, I think it's very iconic. It's a very iconic thing, but a lot of parks have the teacups, so uh, nothing too crazy there. Um, Toy Story Midway Mania, they are, uh, I, I like the things. I, I think it's cool, but to me, it's just a place to sit with a gun. There's, you know, the, the vehicles themselves aren't, don't, aren't really that special. They're not, you know, crazy. Uh, I don't know. It, it, it just didn't, you know, stick with me. Um, Soren is another one, even though it's not really a, a vehicle, you're not really doing anything, you're just hanging. But uh, I think it's really cool, the technology behind it's worth mentioning. And the one that a lot of people are going to be shocked by, uh, the Indiana Jones Adventure. Uh, the, it's the same pretty much as the one, uh, as, as the car and dinosaur. Uh, tech, you know, technologically, this is, uh, you know, an amazing vehicle. You're going around, it's, it's, you know, it's simulating bumps and everything. Uh, it's cool, but it just, it seemed really plain to me. It just seemed like a rehash of Dinosaur. And uh, I loved the ride. The ride vehicles just didn't stick with me at all. I don't remember the ride vehicle. And, you know, it didn't leave a taste in my mouth or anything like that. However, the, the 10 that I listed here were the ones that really made an impact on me for whatever reason. Um, and uh, they're just, you know, it's the thing that I look forward to when I go on the ride, or one of the things that I look forward to when I go on the ride itself. So, number 10 is the Disneyland Railroad. The Disneyland Railroad itself, whether it be the E.P. Ripley or the Walt Disney or the, or the Lily Bell or whatever it is, um, Whichever railroad you're on, it's really, really cool because uh, th there's a history behind it, but, you know, because Walt loved railroads and whatnot, and some of them he actually worked on. So it's just really neat to, uh, you know, to take a ride around the Walt Disney World Railroad all the way around, a round trip. You know, you know, just I would recommend you do that. Uh, you know, hop on, take an entire spin all the way around, and, uh, you know, I think you'll actually enjoy it. There's a lot to see, and uh, I just love to hear the railroad chugging down the line. Uh, it's just really cool, aside from when they blow that freaking uh, steam horn. That's just, that's when it gets a little too loud for me. That's the only thing. But uh, I love the, uh, you know, the history behind it, and I love the look, and it just has that really cool, uh, you know, thing to it. It's really neat. Uh, number nine are, how would I say this? The boats of the Magic Kingdom in Disneyland. It, uh, so you got the Pirates of the Caribbean boats, the Small World boats, the Jungle Cruise boats, and the Storyland Canal uh, boats. Um, I don't know what it is about these different boats versus anywhere else in the world. Um, I think it's because these are some of my favorite attractions that I just get I get giddy when I, I you know when I see them. Uh, it's they're just basic, you know, you know, flotation devices, you know, those sort of things. Uh, the, the the only difference here is the Jungle Cruise boats are obviously on a track, but they look kind of cool. I just love the way they, you know, they look and feel, and I just I, I love the Jungle Cruise, so it's one of my favorites. Uh, and even the Storybook Land Canal boats, they were kind of one of my favorites because uh, it was always something that I wanted to get on when I saw the you know, the promos for Disneyland, and uh, it always seemed like something that I, you know, you know, going into Monstro's mouth and all that stuff, that was really neat, and the fact that the boats were actually driven by the people, obviously they're on a track, but the fact that they're driven by the people, you know, the, you know, motors and whatnot, as they narrate it, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. So I love the boats in, uh, in Walt Disney World. I think those types of attractions are really cool, that and the Omnimover attractions. Number eight, the, the cars from Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, uh, it was re those are really cool. I love the way they're built, um, and you know the fact that they look like cars. And you you know what, the lucky guy always got the uh, you know the steering wheel side. I'll, I'll, you know, 
Otherwise, you uh, had to just deal with being the passenger, the, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, when I got on them again, because uh, I had gotten on uh, a, a Mr. Toad's uh, once before when I was uh, a young person, younger in, uh, in Walt Disney World, and getting on it now back in uh, Disneyland, um, you know, it, it, it brought back all these memories, and uh, it was just cool. It was neat. Uh, so, yeah, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, those cars are really cool. Number seven, this is a technolo you know, a pretty technical, a technological thing. God, I can't, couldn't say that for whatever reason. The Finding Nemo Submarine Ride Submarines. Um, I think that's cool. I really don't remember the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea ride, so I don't really remember getting on the submarine. I don't think I did. I don't, I don't, I, th I think I was too young to really appreciate it. So, I, yeah, I either forgot it or I didn't get on it when it was in its heyday. Um, so getting on this submarine ride, I was kind of skeptical. I was like, do you really go underwater at all? And you do. It's, it's amazing that it is a submarine. You go under the water and it's, you know, you're crammed in there like sardines, which is, uh, I could do without, but, uh, you know, either way, you, you know, you, you know, they cram you in there and they take you underwater. And, and that is pretty cool to me. Uh, it was something new or that I hadn't really experienced or I forgot about and re-experienced. So that was neat. Um, and just overall, it was just something different. I mean, you're not, you know, riding around and it's not a car. And it's not a, you know, a boat floating on a track. It's, uh, you're actually going under the water and yeah, it's on a little track, but you know, you, you know, you're going under the water. I mean, how, how many rides actually take you completely on, you know, under the water? How many ride vehicles can do that? So I just thought that was really neat. So yeah, the Finding Nemo, uh, submarines are pretty cool. Number six is Dumbo, obviously. Uh, it didn't crack my top five because I don't really get on it that much. Uh, but it is iconic. I always have to stare at it for a little bit because those Dumbo, uh, you know, flying uh, elephants are just, it's just almost uh, more iconic than the castle is almost. Uh, you know, everybody knows the Dumbo ride. And uh, when you hop on Dumbo and you, you go up and down and up and down and you can give your child control of the up and down thing and you're just a, an adult going up and down. <laughs> they even have it in the Smithsonian or a, a replica in the Smithsonian. So, uh, you know, it has to be pretty iconic if the Smithsonian's holding on to it. Um, but yeah, it's, it just represents everything that is Disney and, uh, a lot of first timers always wait, we know we'll, you know, persevere and actually get on the, uh, you know, the Dumbo attraction just because it's one of those things that you know, everybody know to, knows is Disney and Disney World. So that's really cool. So Dumbo, number six. Okay. So we're cracking into the top five here. Um, these are my top you know ride attractions that i remember from disneyland and i really enjoyed number five was the ships from peter pan's flight it's kind of you know you know fitting that i mentioned it this uh you know this show in the news uh but i really loved that i thought it's it's something different the fact that you're hanging and going through uh you know the storybook uh or, you know, or the story of Peter Pan. All the other um, dark rides are basically just kind of cars. You hop in a car and you go through. But with this one, you're actually flying to Neverland and flying around Neverland in these magic ships. Uh, the way they look is really cool. You know, it's a boat and the the whole uh, you know the sail is there and it comes down and it doesn't really impede your vision, but it you know it keeps you kind of isolated, but it also allows you to see everything. So you know that's really neat. Uh, I really enjoyed that, and um, it is worth the wait, that ride. Um, it's not one of my favorite rides in Disney, but uh, I always wound up getting on it each and every single time I go, so I guess it is, right? So, um, Peter Pan's Flight, the boat's in there, number five. Okay, now I know this is going to upset people, but number four is the Doom Buggy from the Haunted Mansion. Because uh, a lot of people really love this and would rank that as one of the top three. Um, it's very simple. Um, it's almost like a casket sort of thing. Uh, it's all black and you just hop on in the Omnimover style. You hop on, the thing closes for you. You don't have to pull it in. You know, the, the ghost host does it for you and you just go and it shakes and rattles and takes you all the way through the Haunted Mansion and as, as the ghost host is narrating behind you. And um, the Haunted Mansion is one of my all-time favorite attractions. 
you know, it, it, it gives you a sense of isolation because you're just sitting right there and the only pe you know, people you can see are either the people in front of you or in case you turn around, the people behind you. Um, so yeah, I just really like it. It's one of my all-time favorites, uh, you know, and uh, it's one of my all-time favorite attractions. And uh, I just, um, I, I, I could not keep that out of my top five. I was like one of the ones I needed to keep in my top five. So the Doom Buggy from the Haunted Mansion, really cool, number four. Number three, Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters. I loved that little car. I don't know why. I don't like the one from Walt Disney World because you're kind of constrained and whatnot. But the stuff that goes on with the Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters car is amazing. I love the fact that you can take the gun out and you can control the spin and whatnot. Um, it's just it's just great because you feel like you're in a little spaceship going through this thing, going through Zerg, and uh, you know it's just a lot of technology went into um, you know making this. A little bit better and that much better than the Walt Disney World version um, and I just I loved it it's one of those ones that for whatever reason stuck with me the most I had a fabulous time on it and uh, like just the fact that it's it's a you know it is an Omnimover attraction which adds it you know adds to it for me it was just one of my favorites and uh, that's why I cracked my top three number two is the monorail now, whether you're sitting in the back or you're sitting in the front, whether you, you know, because you can do that in Disneyland, uh, you can't do it in, in Walt Disney World. Um, the, the monorail is iconic, is, is pretty much as iconic, uh, you know, like as the, um, you, know, you know, as the castles or as the Dumbo. Um, everybody knows the monorail at the Magic Kingdom or at Disney World or at Disneyland. Everybody knows the monorail. Um, I always have to get on the monorail even though I'm not going anywhere usually you know with it uh, sometimes I'll take the monorail to you know to and from parks and whatnot um, but usually I'm taking the Disney buses but I don't care if I don't have to I will get on the monorail um, at least once uh, you know each and every single time I go to Disney World um, it's iconic uh, there's no other way to put it um, it may seem like you know just an enhanced bus ride but uh, when you think about the technology and the history behind it, um, it was one of the first things that really stood out that made you know, you know Walt Disney World futuristic. And um, when you ride the monorail, you're like, you know, we should have one of these in our city. Or at least I, I, you know, I believe that I'd take the monorail if Baltimore got one. Um, but it's, it's just so iconic and, and historical, and I love the monorail. And the one at Disneyland was especially great. It looked really retro and really cool, so I loved it. So yeah, the monorail, number two. And the number one ride vehicle at Disneyland that uh, I loved the most was, were the bobsleds and Space Mountain. It was a tie. I was just so happy. I was pleased as punch just to sit in the Matterhorn bobsleds car uh, just because of all the history behind it and the fact that I've n I'd never done that ride before. That was one Disney ride that I wanted to get on. Uh, I made sure to get on it. Uh, the Matterhorn is a classic Disney attraction, and uh, the Matterhorn, uh, you know, vehicles, the, the cars, um, while they aren't the most comfortable thing in the world, are very iconic as well. Um, I just loved, you know, it's, you know, it's the same sort of thing as Space Mountain. You're sitting, you know, two by two, uh, or at least in Space Mountain's case, it's like four by four. Um, it's just, it, it's just being in that single tube and it just seems like it's you know it's very retro because most you know uh, um, roller coasters nowadays you know you're you know you're hanging the stuff comes up over your head and there's a lot of juking and putting all this you know the you know, the seat belts on and everything but with the you know the you know the bobsleds or space mountain it's just a little thing a little clip and there you go that's it nothing you know too crazy um, I think the my, you know my experience of the ride itself and the anticipation of the ride you know amplified the fact that you know I just wanted to sit in the vehicle and because you know even though this wasn't the you know the certain vehicles that uh, Walt Disney sat in because they upgraded it back in the you know the 70s I think or the 80s can't remember they upgraded it and they had to you know make it a little bit more streamlined and you know fit a little bit better people or a little bit more people um, there was still the history there and I just wanted to you know 
enjoy it and experience it and uh, I did and I was really really happy with the Matterhorn Bob so it's the same thing with Space Mountain uh, you know you got you have to love the you know the Space Mountain rockets you know you're blasting off into space and uh, I don't know what it is I just love it because it reminds me of you know old Disney and that's what I love and um, just I mean it's awesome Space Mountain so you know you can't really go bad there so there you go. My number one ride vehicles in Disneyland were the uh, the Matterhorn bobsled, bobsleds, and the Space Mountain rockets. So uh, I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that, but give me your top ten. If you've been to Disneyland, give me your your top ten ride vehicles from either of the parks. It doesn't matter. Um, you know, I'm sure you'll have a lot to disagree with with me, but uh, those are just my personal ones. Those are the ones that left the biggest impression on me. I just you know, I just, I was so happy just to sit in the freaking Matterhorn bobsled, bobsled. I could have not ridden and I would have been okay with it. Actually, no, that's a lie. I wanted to ride the thing. I wanted to ride the thing. Uh, but yeah, so give me your top 10 uh, ride vehicles uh, from Disneyland or whatever, or even Walt Disney World. If you've never been to Disneyland, you know, but you've been to Walt Disney World, give me your top 10 the ones there. And I'll do the wall of my top 10 Disney uh, world um, ride vehicles. I'll do that in a, at a later month, but uh, those are some different ones because I'll be able to include Epcot and all that stuff, and I love some ride vehicles there. So I hope you enjoyed that. My top 10 uh, ride vehicles from the Disneyland Resort. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's uh, show. I want to be doing, the, you know, like I said, the top 10s more often uh, you know, at the end of every month now because I, I really enjoy them, and it's a little break from uh, you know reviewing things every week. Um, I re also remember about the, you know, the 101 Dalmatian stuff, you know, just keep all that in mind. And, um, yeah, two weeks and we do the live Q&A. If you have any questions or anything like that, anything at all, just post them in the comments section below or on Facebook and I'll, I'll, I'll answer them throughout the, uh, you know, the show and, and everything like that. It's going to be a YouTube hangout sort of thing. So we will, we'll be on YouTube. You won't have to go anywhere special. It'll be right here on YouTube. Um, so yeah, if anybody from Disney is watching, please don't sue me. I want people to go to Disneyland and enjoy all of the different ride vehicles that you know are there. Take notice of what you're sitting on while you're riding it, because that's all part of the story. And uh, you might actually uh, learn something and enjoy it a little bit more. Because who doesn't love riding a, a Haunted Mansion Doom buggy? Awesome stuff. Now, if you are going to Walt Disney World or Disneyland, be sure to go to allers.net, touringplans.com, wdwmagic.com for all your latest and greatest Disney news. WaltDisneyWorld.com is good, too, along with Disneyland.com. Check both of them out. And, uh, yeah, I'll try to keep this going, and uh, we're going to be in February already next week. Wow, that's crazy. So, the month of love and Black History Month. Cool. Awesome stuff. Um, yeah. That's, I think that's what I do it this week. So yeah, uh, last week's were in the land. I think you guys got you know you know pretty easily. So I'll try to stump you this week, but as always, you will probably figure it out. So I'll see you guys next time for another Disney news and reviews. And guys, where in the land am I this week? Bye guys.